So everyone always talks about the Apple ecosystem, that it is, how it is, but I'm gonna do you one better. I'm gonna tell you why it is and how it works, just works, sometimes. How Apple gets you hooked and most importantly, how each product you buy makes all the other products you own just that much more valuable. And I'm gonna do it right now. Sponsored by Ting. I've done a ton of videos on everything from Apple Silicon to all the Apple operating systems and interfaces, the atoms, the bits, the pixels, the whole stack. So if you watch this channel regularly, you know how all of it works. And if you don't, hit the subscribe button and bell so you do. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how it all works together, how Apple has melded Apple ID and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and Keychain and all of these technologies so you don't just have single products all existing and working on their own, on their lonesome, but a group of products that work together all around you, centered on you. It's how your iPhone realizes you've bought a new pair of AirPods and lets you tap to connect to them and then propagates that connection to all of your other Apple devices and switch between them instantly. It's also how if there's no Wi-Fi for your Mac, you can just click to instantly tether to your iPhone or cellular iPad. How you can scan a document from your iPhone into your Mac or sign a document on your Mac using your iPad and Apple Pencil. It's how your iPhone text messages can just show up on your iPad or Mac how apps from your iPhone just install on your Apple Watch if you want them to, how your iPhone can unlock your Apple Watch and your Apple Watch can unlock your Mac, how your iPad can be a sidecar display for your Mac, how Fitness Plus will let your Apple Watch link to and track workouts on your Apple TV. And it starts with Bluetooth. Yes, Bluetooth, which I know just sounds totally ridiculous because Bluetooth is terrible. The stuff of our controller and headphone fueled never connecting, always failing nightmares, which is also true. But Apple has been leaning on and enhancing Bluetooth with everything from custom W series and H series wireless and headphone chips to entire and ever growing frameworks like continuity for almost a decade now. Let's say you have an iPhone and then get an iPad or HomePod mini. As soon as you've unboxed it, taken it out and powered it up, as long as they're close together, the interface will just slide up on your iPhone and ask you if you wanna do an easy setup. And that's because Bluetooth Low Energy is broadcasting that a new device is available to set up. And any existing devices in range will pick that up, negotiate a handshake, and offer to start that easy setup process. If you tap to confirm, meaning you have the iPhone in your possession and you, the owner, really wanna use it to set up this new other thing that you now own, it'll start that process. It'll then make you use the camera on your iPhone to scan a color pattern or a dot cloud on the new HomePod mini or iPad or whatever, proving you have both of those devices in your physical possession. You own both and you really, really do wanna use one to set up the other. Depending on the device, there might be other steps as well, like entering your device password or passcode to really, really prove it's really you because it'll be transferring over personal or private data that Apple absolutely isn't messing around with. And then all of your existing stuff will just start coming down from iCloud or across from the existing Apple device to the new one. And you've just been ecosystem son or daughter person. And then the internet or peer-to-peer Wi-Fi or some faster system will kick in to handle the actual data transfer. Because the second that device gets enabled, it creates a Bluetooth low energy BTLE pairing with the existing device. And that's done out of band, which means separate from any normal communications. And it uses Apple's push notification service, APNS, which is a system responsible for just all the internet-based notifications you get on your devices all day, every day. The communication between devices is end-to-end -end encrypted. So basically, just like imagine your iPhone and iPad are sending device-to-device -device iMessages between themselves to set everything up for you. And once that pairing happens, each device generates a symmetric key that's encrypted using 256-bit AES, which is really, really strong encryption. And each device stores that in its own keychain, which is a system Apple devices just use to securely store credentials like passwords. That key is then used to encrypt and authenticate the BTLE broadcast from that device. Apple also does things like measuring time of flight, 
or how long the transmission takes between the actual devices to make sure no one is trying to record the broadcast on one end and relay or replay it to sort of fake their way into the device on the other end. Your iPad or HomePod mini or whatever will receive the advertisement, establish a connection and exchange encryption keys. And it's not just for setup. Once you have set up, all your Apple devices stay connected. So you can do things like handoff, which is when you stop doing an activity on one device and continue at exactly the same place on another device. Like you're typing an email on your iPhone, but you walk over to your iMac and decide it'll just be easier to continue writing it on that big screen and click it or clack it your physical keyboard. There, your iPhone will use Bluetooth LE to advertise the current activity. The mail app will just show up on your iMac's dock with the continuity sticker. And if you click on it, not only will the mail app open, but you'll be taken to the exact email you were writing with all the text you've already written in the exact place where you were writing, just all right there, all exactly as you'd expect. So you can just keep on writing. And because you're logged into the same Apple ID on both devices, if it's something more, if it's something heavier than an email, something bigger like a pages document or a keynote presentation, and it's stored in iCloud, your iPhone and iPad don't even have to worry about trying to send it back and forth over Bluetooth. Your iPad or your Mac could just grab it from iCloud. Because the Bluetooth LE advertisement has limited range, way more limited than something like Wi-Fi and an internet connection, the relative proximity helps ensure that your devices are physically in the same place. So if you're at home typing out a super private and personal message, you don't have to worry about your activity being advertised on the Mac that you typically use at work or at school. In other words, that a colleague or classmate couldn't just walk over to it and pull up you know, whatever you're typing, whatever fringe website you're currently browsing. If the data isn't on iCloud, but is still too big to be efficiently transferred over Bluetooth, for example, if your email has a bunch of images attached, Apple will create a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi connection just between those two devices. That's encrypted using transport layer security, TLS, but it's just way faster than Bluetooth, which means it's doing much more than just syncing content the way a lot of online services do. It's syncing the actual state of that content. And it doesn't just work with handoff between apps either or websites. It works with the universal clipboard as well. So if you have a photo on your Mac that you wanna paste into Twitter on your iPhone, you don't even have to go through all the handoff brouhaha. You can literally just hit Command C on your Mac and then tap hold and paste right into your iPhone or vice versa, text, passwords, two-factor codes, whatever is ridiculously convenient. And you can also airdrop from one Apple device to another. It's a little bit more complicated because you're not just airdropping always between your own Apple devices, you can airdrop to friends or family or to people you've just met, anyone at all. To maintain security there, when you turn on AirDrop, Apple creates a short identity hash based on your Apple ID, your email or your phone number. When you go to AirDrop, your device begins advertising for a connection and it includes that hash. So if someone else is within Bluetooth low energy range and has AirDrop enabled, they can receive that advertisement. Then one of two different things can happen. If their airdrop is in contacts only mode, it'll receive your hash and try to match it against the hashes of the people in their contacts database. If it finds a match, it'll respond over peer-to-peer -peer Wi-Fi and your device will take the extra step of sending a long identity hash. If that matches as well, their long identity hash will be sent back to you. Then if you have their proper name and profile pic in your contacts, airdrop will show you that to you as a potential target for airdrop. And that way you can never use AirDrop to just pull someone else's contact information or photo uh, and they can't ever pull yours. You both only ever see what you both only already have. So if you're AirDropping to your parent or colleague, they only ever see the pretty and proper profile pic they already have of you, not the old drunken party pic from pre-2020 that you reverted to last week just to feel alive again. Then just tap on the person you want to AirDrop to, a TLS encrypted connection is created, each of your iCloud NA certificates is verified against the contact. And if the person you're airdropping to accepts, then the data is transferred securely and conveniently. As cool as airdrop is though, it's only one of several cool things. With Wi-Fi password sharing, I mean, once the world stops ending and we get to you know, visit each other again, if a friend drops by and wants to be added to your network, you don't have to tell them your password. You don't even have to type it in for them. 
they'll just tap to connect on their Apple device and your Apple device will pop up a request for them to join. If you approve it, the password gets encrypted and dropped to them. And while they never see it, their device saves it to their keychain and boom, they're on your Wi-Fi. And that's, that's the real secret of the Apple ecosystem, or one of the secrets at least. It's how continuity, how all the products working together become a force multiplier, really a functionality and convenience multiplier. So Apple knows this. They know that the more Apple devices you get, the better the experience gets. Uh, pretty much exactly like Ting. Whether you want only a little data or just all of it, unlimited, Ting has the perfect plan for you and for your family. You can get talk and text for just $10 a month, data from $15, five gigabytes for $25, unlimited from $45. Whatever you need, just go to renee.ting.com and check out the plans and see how much you can save. You get access to the best nationwide coverage in America on pretty much any phone, from the latest iPhone 12 to the Galaxy flips and folds to the pixels to pretty much anything with a SIM card in it. And you can keep your existing phone, keep your existing number if you want to, because the next generation of Ting Mobile is here. And seriously, see how much you can save and get $25 off. Just go to renee.ting.com, click on the link below or go to renee.ting.com and get $25 off. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. For a ton more on all the latest Apple products, everything from the ecosystem, from M1 Max to the iPhone 12s, just click on the playlist above. I've got in-depth reviews and comparisons up detailing every single new feature and lots more to come. So click on that playlist and I'll see you next video.